Let's go on a hunt for some hidden gems in Sofia. This is going to be episode number five. In this series, we explore lesser known corners, tucked away marbles and cultural gems that often escape the spotlight. Please join me as I explore the Sofia Zoo, the Royal Palace of Vrana and the Red Flat. The Sofia Zoo was established in 1888 by King Ferdinand. This is the oldest and largest zoological garden in Southeast Europe. It attracts approximately 800,000 visitors per year. The zoo boasts a rich variety of wildlife with nearly 2,500 animals spanning 312 different species. During my recent visit, I was delighted to encounter exotic animals like elephants, lions, tigers, jaguars and crocodiles. I have already created a detailed video about the zoo and I will share the link with you in case you would like to watch it. I'm also planning to provide an update this summer as some of the new animals were still hiding due to the lingering cold weather. This is the Japanese garden, but it's closed at the moment. You can just come closer. Unfortunately, it's locked. Welcome, Luisa and Frosia. The two elephants have arrived to the Sofia Zoo about four or five months ago. Uh, the elephants have been playing with me hide and seek because uh, the moment I go to see them indoors they go outside and vice versa but I managed to see them and I spent quite a long time over here because the, during my previous two visits there was no elephant in the zoo. The zoo is situated a little bit to the south from the city center. You can easily reach it by metro and there are several buses that come here. For example, bus 83, bus 64 and yeah, you can, you can check on Google Maps which bus would be suitable for you. For a comprehensive experience, allocate at least two hours to explore this park. For more information, you can visit the official website of the Sofia Zoo. Our second gem is the Royal Palace of Vrana. It lies beyond the city's edge near the foothills of Vitusha Mountain. The palace and the surrounding park are located approximately 17 kilometers from the city center. The land was acquired by King Ferdinand in 1898. The first building was constructed in 1904 as a hunting lodge. The second construction was erected a couple of years later. The property is named Vrana because Vrana in Bulgarian is a crow. And when uh, King Ferdinand purchased the land, he didn't know what to name this property and because he loved animals and birds he decided that whatever bird lands in front of him first he's going to name the property after the bird. In 1943 Tsar Simeon II assumed ownership of the property. Despite communist confiscation during their regime, the former royal family eventually returned to Bulgaria after the fall of communism. 
They now reside in one of the palace buildings. The palace buildings don't seem to be in a good condition and they need a renovation. The nearby park boasts diverse trees and plants but also requires maintenance. There is also a large lake particularly enchanting during the summer months and regrettably I didn't capture it on film because it's currently empty. Here you can see a children's playground and the area housing the stables. You need two or three hours to explore the park and the best time to visit is June because this is the season of the lilies. This is a very interesting tree. What are these? The bird symphony is just amazing and in a moment you're going to hear the woodpecker. If you're curious to find out more details about the royal palace of Rana, you can watch another video I filmed about two years ago. I'm going to add a link to the upper right corner. Looks like popcorn. It smells lovely. The Red Flat Museum recreates the everyday life of a typical Bulgarian family during the 80s and the communist regime in the country. The museum is situated on Ivan Denkoglu Street and it offers an interactive experience. The Red Flat is a fascinating and unique way to travel back in time and discover a different side of Sofia. Dad used to have this for shaving. Oh, this is a really old one. 